L'Hopital's rule says that if you have, uh, like if you were to substitute your value for your limit, you would get zero over zero, or if you got infinity over infinity, then you can take a derivative of the numerator and denominator and then reapply the same limit. We want to be looking for you know, that, um, that zero over zero possibility. We can apply L'Hopital's rule if the derivatives would do something meaningful and help us get closer to evaluating uh, the limit. So here, what happens if we were to plug in one? Let's see if we can even apply L'Hopital's rule. If you were to plug in one, cosine of one, you could plug that in the calculator. All right, cosine of one is uh, not indeterminate. That's something that we can we can solve for. That's a uh, Oops. That's 0 0.99984. So this is an indeterminate form right now. Okay, it's a divide by zero problem, but it's not zero over zero like this is. So um, if you want to evaluate this limit, uh, the limit's going to be in. Uh, limit's going to be positive infinity. Because as you get really, really close to 1, the denominator gets really, really close to 0, but the numerator stays, uh, it goes towards that constant value, the 0 0.999. But this one doesn't need L'Hopital's rule because the top isn't 0. The bottom is, but the top is not 0, so it's not in uh, indeterminate form. That's not one where we would use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, That's a limit we could evaluate without it. Uh, let's try the next one. Uh, limit as x approaches infinity. So remember, L'Hopital's rule is when you would have like an infinity over infinity problem. If you were to substitute infinity, which you technically can't do, you can't plug in infinity, but if you were to consider what happens as x goes to infinity, it would be that uh, this top number tends towards infinity, this bottom number tends towards negative infinity. Okay, so that's an infinity over infinity problem, so that's where we could potentially use the L'Hopital's rule. Because if you apply it, the derivative of the top using the chain rule and the derivative of the bottom and now if you apply L'Hopital's rule you're going to have you're going to go towards positive infinity in the numerator divided by negative 2 so this goes towards negative infinity. L'Hopital's rule helps us with that one. Um, this next one will L'Hopital's rule help us? Um, as x approaches 0 we don't need L'Hopital's rule because again if you plug in 0 you get 0 on the top and you get negative 3 in the bottom. That's not indeterminate form. So that's not L'Hopital's rule. Here, uh, L'Hopital's rule, you could rewrite it uh, so that it's a fraction. This is the same thing as the limit as x approaches negative infinity for x squared over e to the negative x. That's the same thing because you could return that to have a positive power by putting it in the numerator. And then if you evaluate the value with the limit as x goes towards infinity, you've got uh, indeterminate form. You've got an, an infinity over an infinity. So you could use L'Hopital's rule, take a derivative at the top. So that would make it 2x, and then derivative at the bottom. Do the same thing. Uh, evaluate the limit again, and then you get 2, and then all of a sudden it's something you can determine because of L'Hopital's rule because... As x goes towards negative infinity, negative, negative infinity makes positive infinity. So this is going towards uh, infinity. So this is 2 divided by infinity. That's going towards 0. So L'Hopital's rule helped us out there because we could rewrite it in terms of uh, uh, after algebraically manipulating it. We could rewrite it so that we could use L'Hopital's rule. Um, this one down here. Uh, right now it doesn't look like L'Hopital's rule because uh, the top is 1. Um, the question says whether you could use L'Hopital's rule after algebraically manipulating. So let's see. When I see two fractions, I think about getting common denominators. So if I multiply the top and the bottom of the first fraction by sine of x, and I multiply the top and the bottom of the second fraction by x, oh, sorry, I forgot to multiply the bottom. Uh, I've got common denominators. 
So I'm dropping some of the limit notation to save my, my hand here. Okay, and then do we have indeterminate form because the limit as x goes to 0 from the right. So the denominator is surely going to be 0. And the numerator, uh, sine of 0 is 0. And uh, minus 0 would also make 0. So this is indeterminate form. So L'Hopital's rule could potentially help us because it's in indeterminate form. It's a 0 over 0 issue. Um, so if we were to actually go through and use it, derivative of the top, And the, oh, the derivative of the of bottom, using L'Hopital's rule, this is still the limit. Um, so that's sine of x plus x cosine x. And then if you were to apply L'Hopital's rule again, uh, the derivative of the top would make negative sine x, and the derivative of the bottom would be cosine x plus cosine x plus... Uh, sorry, it's now going to be subtract x sine x. I use the product rule again. Um, now, is this indeterminate form? Uh, if I plug in 0, I've got 0 in the numerator, 0 in the denominator. It's 1 plus 1 makes 2. It's not 0 in the denominator anymore. And actually, maybe, was it here? If I plug in 0, it would be 1 minus 1 makes 0. That's 0 plus 0. Yeah, okay, so here we still need a L'Hopital's rule again, but we do it one more time. If you plug 0 in, if you evaluate the limit, uh, then the numerator uh, goes towards 0. The denominator is 1 plus 1 when you plug in 0 in for x. So it's 2 minus 0. So now we can say that that limit is 0. So L'Hopital's rule helped us with that tricky problem. Um... I'm thinking about how we could rewrite this. Let's see. This one's probably the most non-intuitive one out of all of them. But look, when you have a variable in the exponent, um, a lot of the times a logarithm is our only way of, of evaluating the limit. Let's try to rewrite it algebraically so we can use L'Hopital's rule. Look, let's say that the limit is equal to L. Let's say there's going to be a limit. We're going to call it L. Now, if I take a logarithm of both sides, Just use natural log. Um, that lets me use the power rule. So the limit of sine x times that natural log x. That equals some natural log of a limit that we don't know yet. Uh, Pause and back to the video because what I tried, I mean, there's got to be an easier way. I tried using, uh, I tried write, rewriting this in a fraction so that we could look for indeterminate form. You know, I put natural log x, I made that to the negative first power and put it in the denominator. And we had indeterminate form, but the algebra got crazy. So let's try something else. Look, what I'm writing is the same thing as what's here in parentheses. Here, actually, let's write it like that first. This might make more sense. Right? Because, again, if you want to restore a negative exponent to be a positive exponent, just move it to the opposite place of the fraction. This is the same thing. Um, and then if we rewrite a little bit more, because uh, the negative first power of sine means 1 over sine of x, right? But we actually have something for that. It's called cosecant of x, the reciprocal trig function. So an easier way of writing this is natural log x over cosecant x. Uh, and now we have indeterminate form because if you were to evaluate the limit as zero, as x approaches zero from the right, this is going to be negative infinity and cosecant of x. You could look at a graph of that, but that's also going to be tending towards infinity. So we have indeterminate form. So we could eventually um, evaluate this limit. You want the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. It's just a little bit more algebra. But we, re we rewrote this in indeterminate form. So we found out that this also could be um, used to... Um, we could use the L'Hopital's rule on this one. Just take some algebraic manipulation. I think we said this one. 
Oh, I don't remember. I deleted them on accident, but 